One of the many things I love about Red Dead Redemption 2 is the various mini games and activities that you can play within Red Dead Redemption 2, including Five Finger Filet, along with Dominoes, Blackjack, and Poker, which is specifically what we're going to be talking about today. Shout out to one of my subscribers, Dr. Cheats. Can you do a video on poker? I'm hopeless on that. He also wanted me to do a video about the mysterious channel Catfish in New Austin, but I'll just stick with poker. I love fishing in Red Dead Redemption 2, and I'm kind of an amateur angler, but nah, we'll just tackle something I'm a little bit better at, and that's poker. Now, there's several types of poker. A few examples include five card draw, seven card stud, but today, specifically, we're going to talk about the most popular type of poker, which is Texas Hold'em. Now, I don't claim to be the best at playing poker. Far from it. If I was, I would probably be in Vegas and, you know, one of those professional poker tournaments, you know, living it up, right? <laughs> but I still love playing the game, and I have enjoyed it ever since my grandfather taught me how to play many years ago. So let's get to the basics, shall we, when it comes to poker. In every deck, there are 52 cards total. And in each deck, there are a total of four suits, which include hearts, clubs, diamonds, and spades. So you will see the same types of cards in each one of these suits, but a different icon by it. Either a heart, a club, a diamond, or a spade. And each suit has the same amount of cards in it. And we start at the bottom. Very simple if you know basic math. Two is the lowest card you can get, followed by three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now the top four cards can be a little bit more complicated because obviously those are not numbers. But from bottom to top on these, it's jack followed by queen. Above the queen is the king. And at the very top is the ace, the bullet, the best card that you can get in a deck. And as you may have noticed amongst these cards, they come from all four sets. Two of hearts. There's also a two of clubs, a two of diamonds, a two of spades. Just like there's a seven of spades, a seven of diamonds, seven of clubs, seven of hearts. So now that we got those basics out of the way, we're going to move on to the different types of hands you can get in poker when you're playing in Red Dead Redemption 2 and possibly in Red Dead Online as well. Hopefully. Bear in mind, we're going to start at the bottom and we're going to work our way up from the weakest hand you can have to the biggest hand. And in this case, we have nothing except for a high card. And the highest card that we have is a king of clubs. And the high card can be anything, whether it's a king, a queen, an ace. It's just one card. It's your highest card that you can play at the end of a round. And it could be all the way down to a nine or all the way up to an ace. The point is, you have no two cards that go together, none of it works, and all you got is the high card. In this case, it's the king of clubs. That's the best you have, but it's at the very lowest at the bottom when it comes to the different types of hands you can get in the game. Moving above the high card is the pair. And this can be two of anything. The lowest would be a pair of twos. The highest would be a pair of aces. But in this case, it's a pair of eights. A pair of eights can beat a high card, but a pair of eights cannot beat a pair of nines or a pair of tens or a pair of jacks, a pair of queens, a pair of kings, a pair of aces. But a pair of eights can beat anything below a pair of eight. So you got the high card, and above that, you have a pair. And then above the pair, you have two pair, or two of a kind. Basically, you have two pairs, as you can tell. It's in the name. In this case, there's a pair of eights 
and there's a pair of sixes. Now, the lowest two pair you can have is a pair of twos and a pair of threes, while the highest pair you can have is a pair of kings and a pair of aces. Now, some of you are probably wondering, well, what about if I had two pairs of aces with four aces or uh, four kings? We'll get to that in just a little bit. Now, above two of a kind or two pair, we have three of a kind. That's right. If you have three of any cards that are the same number or same rank, whether it's in this case three eights or three twos or all the way up to three aces, that is a three of a kind, which beats two pair, which also beats a pair and obviously beats a high card. Now above three of a kind is a straight. Now this is just a standard straight. You got a five, six, seven, eight, nine. Now the lowest straight you can have is a two, three, four, five, six. The highest you can have is a 10, jack, queen, king, and ace. Now, what's interesting about a straight is it doesn't matter if these are in different suits. Now, if you have them all in the same suit, that's an even better hand, which we'll talk about in a little bit. But for a basic straight, all you're going for is it being in order, like this example here with five, six, seven, eight, nine. As you can tell, there's a five of diamonds, six of spades, seven of clubs, eight of diamonds, nine of clubs. That's Pretty simple. If you get numbers, you know, at least basic math, you understand that these numbers go in order. That's a straight, which is better than three of a kind, two pair, a pair, or a high card. Now, above a straight, we have a flush. Now, a flush can be from any of the four suits that we went over earlier. In this case, we have a club flush. And we have a queen of clubs, a five of clubs, a three of clubs, a two of clubs, and an ace of clubs. So it doesn't matter what the order is here. It can be all over the place. And by the way, we will be getting to straight flush in just a moment. Some of you are probably wondering about that as well. But yes, straight flushes are a thing. But right now we're focusing on purely a flush. So if you end up getting a hand that has five diamonds or five hearts or five spades or in this case five clubs you have a flush which is better than a straight three of a kind two pair pair or high card now what's better than a flush is a full house no not the tv show <laughs> this is a full house a pair combined with a three of a kind in this case we have a pair of kings and three eights. And this can go as low as, say, for example, uh, three twos, two threes, all the way up to two kings and three aces. That's what a full house is. A pair combined with three of a kind, which is better than a flush, straight, three of a kind, two pair, pair are high card. Now, going above a full house is a four of a kind. Some of you were wondering about this earlier. That's what it's called, a four of a kind. When you have four of the same card, obviously they're different suits from all four suits. In this case, we have four eights. It can be as low as four twos or as high as four aces. And it's very difficult to get these higher hands. It's not so difficult to get a pair or even a two of a kind or even sometimes three of a kind or a flush, but to get four of a kind can be extremely unlikely. And it does happen every now and then, but there are hands that are surprisingly better to have than a four of a kind. The second best hand that you can get in poker is this a straight flush which we mentioned a moment ago it's not just a straight in this case five six seven eight nine it is also the same numbers in order from the same suit whether it's diamonds 
hearts, spades, or clubs. As long as it's in the same suit and is in order, it is a straight flush. And obviously, once again, it can be as low as two, three, four, five, six, as long as it's the same suit, all the way up to the highest and best hand that you can get in poker, the royal flush or the royal straight flush. If you have this hand, chances are you're most likely going to win that round of poker. This is one of the more difficult hands to get in the game. When it comes to the odds, this one rarely comes up for players, but it does happen. But this is the absolute best hand you can get. In this case, it'll always be a 10, Jack, Queen, King, Ace. The only difference is what suit it happens to be in. It can either be a club, a heart, a diamond, or a spade. But no matter what the suit is, as long as you have these five cards, 10, Jack, Queen, King, Ace, that is a royal flush. Now, if one of these were, say, a diamond, that would not be a royal flush. That would just be a straight, which is a big difference. So you always want to be mindful about the cards that you have and the suits that they belong in. To review, let's go to cardplayer.com. And uh, here is the hands from highest to lowest, just to give you guys an idea. And I'll link this below in the description section for you to go check out yourself. At the top, once again, is a royal flush. Below that is straight flush. Four of a kind, full house, flush, straight, three of a kind, two pair, pair, and high card. Now, let's move over into how Texas Hold'em works. The dealer will give you two cards, and ultimately, five cards will be on the table. And what you do is you kind of play a game of mix and match either using one or both of your cards in combination with either, let's say, three or four cards that are on the table. Bear in mind, I'm just trying to simplify this for you, and uh, we'll play a few games of poker in Red Dead Redemption 2 to help give you a better idea. Now, once again, as I mentioned, the dealer has given us two cards, and eventually there are going to be five cards on the table. Now, the five cards are technically not on the table right now, but just for visual references, I've already put them on the table. So here are the two cards that we have. The two cards we were given is a king of hearts and a five of spades. Now, we have several options here. There's going to be a big blind and a small blind as the, the deck rotates from round to round. And every now and then, you're going to be the big blind, and you're going to have to put in the full amount to start the match. So let's just say it's five cents. Or maybe the small blind is five cents, the big blind is 10 cents. So everybody has to put in a total of 10 cents before the dealer puts out the first card on the table. Now the first card has been put on the table, obviously. Just pretend the other four are not there yet. And once the first card's put on the table, then the first player is going to have the ability to either check, which means they don't want to put any money on the table, but they wish to stay in the game, which leads it to the next player in the match to either check, fold, which means they don't want to play anymore during this round. They want to wait till the next round because they don't think they have a very good hand, or they can put money on the table. Let's just say they decide to check too. And we'll just say hypothetically there's four people playing right now. Okay, so, so person A... They check, person B checks, person C and D, they all check because they don't really have anything that they're willing to put money on the table for. They just want to see some more of the card. So everybody's checked and the dealer decides to put down the second card. This time around, it's the queen of spades. And this makes things a little bit more interesting. Maybe not for us because right now all we have is a king of hearts and a five of spades. But it is possible, maybe, that we could have a flush to work with, either a flush of hearts or a flush of spades, because there is a seven of hearts on the table and a queen of spades. And we happen to have a heart 
as well as a spade. So what's going through my mind right here is the possibility, a very small possibility of either getting a heart or spade flush. Anything else I'm thinking maybe I'll be lucky to get another king turn up on the table, a pair of kings or a pair of fives or maybe a two pair, maybe a pair of kings and a pair of fives from these three remaining cards. So anyways, you know, money gets put on the table, maybe one person folds and then the dealer deals out the third card. Now this has made it even more interesting for me because now I'm starting to think that maybe just maybe I have a better chance of getting a flush from spades than hearts because there are two spades on the table and I currently have one spade in my pocket. So this is enticing me to possibly stay in depending on how the other players play. If they start putting serious money down and I feel uncomfortable with this hand, I don't feel confident enough to start bidding or raising people or calling people. Now calling is whenever somebody says I bid 10 cents or $10 and instead of raising them, you just want to move on to the next card. You say, okay, I call, which means you're going to put 10 cents on the table or $10 or whatever but you do have the option to raise that player. And bear in mind, a lot of people will bluff. They will act like they have something. Only at the end of the round, the truth is, they had nothing. They were just bluffing. They were just playing the game, going with a little psychological warfare. So a lot of the uh, raising and going back and forth could be a lot of bullshit. You know, this guy thinks he may have a really good hand, or he realizes he doesn't have a good hand, but he's just trying to bluff everybody into folding so that he or she can win the round. But sometimes they actually have a good hand. So right now, that's what we're looking at. A potential spade flush, which most likely isn't going to happen. So everyone's been taken care of. There's still three players in the game. And the dealer drops the fourth card, which is a ten of spades. So it's starting to look very possible that I could have a spade flush on my hands. Now, this could go my way or it could completely not go my way. If I'm still in the game right now, I'm probably riding on this. I'm probably willing to stay in because my curiosity gets the better of me because there are odds, factors, and equations going on that I'm thinking about how maybe, just maybe, that fifth card is going to be a spade and it's going to give me the opportunity to possibly win this round. Now, if there wasn't a three of spades or a ten of spades, let's just say that three was a club and the ten was also a club, I probably would be out of this one. Even though I have a five of hearts, I feel like I'd probably be better off walking away. And so that's another thing you have to be mindful of. Always pay attention to what's on the table, not just what's in your hand, but what's on the table because it could give you an idea of what other players may or may not have. If you see three spades and you see somebody over there betting money, feeling confident, there's a very real possibility that either A, they already have a flush because they happen to have two spades on them, or B, they're just like us right now, hoping that fifth card is going to be a spade as well. So the last three players still in the round, only one person folded, everyone's checked, and now the dealer drops the fifth and final card, which is the five of hearts. And basically that means our hopes of getting a flush is in the toilet. But we do have a pair of fives. Not very good, but at the same time, I'm at the point now where I've put some money into the pot hoping that that fifth card was going to be a flush. And at this point, I, it could be the point of no return where I have no choice but to stay in this game in the hopes that maybe, just maybe, my pair of fives could win the day. And reality is probably not because somebody could have had a queen. And reality is a pair of queens beats a pair of fives. Or they could have had a pair of sevens or a pair of tens. Both those hands beat a pair of fives. Now, if somebody only had a pair of threes, then the pair of fives would be the high card and I would have won the pot. Now, if someone else would have had a uh, another five on them and they had a five and let's just say a queen, 
then they would have got a two pair and they would have won anyways. However, however, if they also happen to have the same, well, similar cards that I had, say the uh, king of diamonds and the five of clubs, we would split the pot. That's how it would go down. So if you have a draw where you have two players with winning hands having basically the exact same hand. Now let's just say that maybe instead of the queen dropping, we had a king. That would mean that we would have two pair, as I mentioned a moment ago, a pair of kings and a pair of fives. But then let's just play another what if scenario. What if we had two fives on the table and a king? That would mean that we would have a full house, a very good hand indeed. So basically that's how Texas Hold'em works. You take your two cards or one of your two cards and you play it with what you have on the table. In this case, we'd be playing it with the king and the two fives. So you would take the seven and the 10 and just mentally discard them because we're only playing with three of those five cards to go of our two cards. So yes, ultimately you are playing this game with a total of five cards. It's just up to you to determine which of the cards you're gonna play with. Are you gonna need both those cards in your hand? Or is only one of the cards necessary to go with four of the other cards already on the table? Now, if both of your cards suck, then you should have folded a long time ago. Now we've gotten that out of the way, I'm gonna play a few rounds of poker in Red Dead Redemption 2. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave them below in the comment section and I will do my best to reply to whatever question you happen to have. And if that question has already been asked in the comment section, I would ask that you first look in the comment section because someone may have asked the question that you are planning on asking and maybe already answered that question. I don't have a problem with doing my best to answer your questions, but at the same time, I really don't wanna answer the same question over and over and over again, especially if I've already answered it in the comment section and for those of you that are fellow poker players you're more than welcome to chime in the comment section as well so let's go ahead and get to it let's go watch me suck at some poker in red dead redemption 2. Okay. come on who's gonna play yeah all right all right let's get into it shall we who we got today i feel my father's eyes on the back of my head for playing this we got lenny we got these days i want to try my hand at liar's dice Ah, uh, very funny, John Marston. And Uncle! All right, this is going to be good. Okay, so, anyways, it is currently my turn. By the way, we have a Queen of Diamonds, I mean Queen of Spades, and a Five of Hearts. So, I am the small blind, so I have to throw in two cents into the pot in order to continue. So, we'll do that. All right. Okay. Okay. So, obviously, this is a... Small amount of money compared to other uh, tables in the game. But it's a, it's a good starting point to play at uh, the camp. Plus, you're playing against some familiar faces. So we're going to call again, even though I don't really have anything. I'm just curious to see what the five cards are going to end up being. All right. So right now, all I really have is a queen to go by. Well, we'll see. We'll see. All right, let's have a look. All right, we do have a heart. And a spade. Mm -mm. So it, it's similar to what we have what we had earlier during my little tutorial I did for you guys, coincidentally. So either way, you have maybe... Well, I don't really know. Let's just check. Check doesn't cost us anything. Check. Okay. All right, let's see. We got nine diamonds. So yep, check. We, have a, we have a pair of fours. Pair of fours with a queen high. And right now, I think Lenny raised it to 10 cents, so he could have something. And I'm not really confident enough to continue with this hand, so I'm going to fold. And we'll see how it plays out here. Okay. So John's also folded. It's between Uncle and Lenny right now. John's going to throw out the last card because he's the dealer. So, pair of fours right now. All right, Lenny's raised it. And... Uncle's called. Pair of fours and twos. Pair of sevens and fours. Uncle has won the pot. 
He has drawn first blood. Yes, he has. So hopefully the tutorial, the basics, is helping some of you that are new to poker. And hopefully actually seeing some games and... That's right, it builds a lot of character. Who said that? I think David Callender did. Well, we can't speak ill of the dead. That's right. Okay, so we currently got a five of diamonds, two of hearts. Not much to go on here. Sure. All right. So check for uh, zero cents. And so I think I was the big blind, which means you automatically have to put the, uh, the amount that you start into the pot. But since I already did, unless it's like a, most of the time I will, I will stay in at least till the uh, hands are revealed. And as you can tell here, the difference here in this match is three cards get revealed instead of one card. It, it just depends on how you play the game. Now, right now, the only thing I have is a pair of twos. And Lenny has uh, put down a bet of three cents. And to be honest, I'm not really feeling this, so... I'm going to fold. All right. The idea is not to go all in. It's about patience. Yeah. Especially when you're first starting off, play it safe. All right. So right now, John has put some more money on the table. Well, chips are called chips. Same thing, money, chips. You know, chips is the, the currency of the table, and the chips are backed by monies. And as you can tell... You can see how much money everybody has. John currently has 69 cents, Uncle $1.19, Lenny 52 cents, and we have 94 cents. All right, so so they're going back and forth, John and Uncle. All right, pair of aces. John wins. Pair of aces beats a pair of sevens. John has won $1.96, which in 1899 was probably a lot of money. <laughs> a lot more than it is now. So John just had a pretty good hand there. But my pair of twos would have been too costly. Okay, so Lenny's the dealer now. And you'll see how it changes from big blind to small blind. And that, that part's not as important. So right now we got a seven of hearts and a two of, of, uh, two of clubs. And it'll cost me one cent to stay in the game, so okay. I'll check. So there we go. John checked because he already had money on the table. Got three cards. Oh, look at that. They're all hearts. A five of hearts, a ten of hearts, and a jack of hearts. And we just happen to have a, a seven of hearts. So if either of the last two cards is also a heart, that means that we will have a flush. So we're going to throw two cents on the table. Just a little. We have a little confidence here. Uh -uh. Now, nope, John and Uncle had nothing. Yeah. But we won because everyone else bowed out. So, yeah, if you put money on the table, sometimes other players that don't have as good of a hand or they don't think they have a very good hand, they'll fold. And it's, it's a psychological way of, of winning a hand. But at the same time, I felt like I had a possibility of getting a flush there. Then again, it may have not gone in my favor. The best I could have got was a high card. Okay, so what do we got this time? This time we got... So Lenny's just dropped two cents in. We got a two of spades and a king of diamonds. The king of diamonds is interesting. So we'll definitely stay in. I at least want to stay in until the first three cards are shown. Now here's a respectable bet. But, like, like I just said a moment ago, you'll notice that... Some people play Texas Hold'em a little differently. Some people will do one card at a time. And some people will show three cards at once. So I, I showed it. We're showing it two different ways. Now in Red Dead Redemption 2, it's shown differently. So someone's betted six cents. So in order for me to stay in, I have to either uh, call it six cents, raise, or fold. But I'll go ahead and call. I'll go ahead and throw six cents in. We have, we have 90 cents in, over here in chips. So we're, we're doing quite well. And we're also the dealer, by the way. And it automatically deals, so you don't have to worry about that. There's a lot of things that are automatically done in the game. We have a pair of kings, by the way. Pair of kings. I'll call it 14 cents. A pair of kings is good because the high card on the table is a king, and I happen to have another king. So, not too shabby. 
There is a potential straight in the works as well for somebody. So that's something to be concerned about. Somebody could have a five, and if a nine is the next card, then somebody could easily have a straight. So just something to be mindful of. All the different scenarios that could play out. Now, this could go the other way. This could easily go the other way. So you have six, seven, eight. If somebody has a nine, if somebody has a nine, they have a straight right now. So we'll see. We'll see who has it. Pair of kings. Ten, okay, so Uncle had a straight. Uncle wins because he had a straight. He had a 10 high straight. Uncle wins the match. So see, he had that nine. It worked to his advantage, and he just got a straight. So hopefully, like I said, hopefully this is proving somewhat helpful and informative for those of you new to poker. And like I said earlier, if there is any questions you guys have about poker regarding Red Dead Redemption 2, feel free and leave them in the comment section. But be mindful of the fact that someone else may have already asked a similar question. So read the comment section first, and just to make sure. And I'll do my best, and any other poker player will do their best to try and answer any questions you guys might have. Right now, we got a 9 of spades and a 2 of hearts. So we have a 9 high, not very impressive, but we'll... We'll stay in for, for shits and giggles. Because you never know. It may seem like a crappy hand, but sometimes it can turn out to be a great hand. And what starts off as a great hand may end up being junk. It can go either way. It's amazing how poker is. All right, so right now we got a potential uh, we got a potential flush. We got two spades to go with my nine of spades. So we got a potential flush. The other two cards would have to be spades, though. We'll call it two cents. All right, so we got it. So we we can't get a flush now. Our our chances of getting a flush are null and void. We really can't get anything. So the best thing to do in this situation, when you feel like you've hit a dead end, is to fold, save your money, and walk away. It's just like that that um, quote I put up from a Kenny Rogers song earlier: "Know when to hold them, know when to fold them." Sometimes you just gotta fold them. Don't let your pride cost you all your money at the table. Poker is a long game, and you see a lot of people come into poker, and I see that all the time And like, whenever I used to play Providence Poker, that people would just come in and they would just go all in after like two or three hands, and I hate that. It just shows a impatience, and I hate that. Poker is not about a short game. It's about the long game, about whittling down your opponents, and mostly it's about having a good time. So we have a potential flush here, a 7-4 of clubs. They're in the same family, the same suit. I say family just to say it. But suit, family, same thing. Okay, check. It doesn't cost me anything to check. I already put money on the table. Because I think Arthur was the big blind. Alright, so right now, uh, we've been screwed. There's no way that we can get... There's no way that we can get a uh, club flush. So, we might as well just fold here. Like I said, no one to hold them, no one to fold them. Well, uh, you're just going to have to be patient, Lenny. Yeah. I'm not going to make it easy for you. I'm, I'm playing hard to get, guys. <laughs> it's going to be hard to get that booty. <laughs> you got to wine and dime me first. All right, so right now, that's that's what's on the table at the moment. All right. Let's see. So somebody, let's see, possibly could have a, a heart flush. A heart flush is a possibility. Pair of aces. Pair of eights. Aces beats eights. Uncle wins the match again. So, Uncle is the winner. And I hear a lot of people have trouble playing Uncle. Like, the first time I played Uncle during the last... Uh, oh, Len Lenny's out. Well, Lenny, you're not going to be getting my money today, good sir. Not to D. But whenever I played Uncle in uh, last week's poker stream, uh, I pretty much stomped a mud hole in him, so... Okay, here we go. Let's see what we got. What do we got to play with? I, it starts with me, two cents. I'm the small blind. I'm also the dealer. I got a high jack of spades and a seven of hearts. I'll go ahead and throw two cents in. Let's see what John and Uncle will do. All right. Oh, he put down some money. All right, here we go. They're both still in. Okay, so that's what we got right now to do. If we got a pair of sevens on us, and as you can tell, the video game will tell you what you have at the top left-hand corner. A pair of sevens for anyone that, you know, wants 
a better idea of what you got. Always look up there in the top left-hand corner. This game does a good job of, of helping a lot of people that are new to poker understand what they have. All right, all right. So we're going to check. It doesn't cost anything to check. We have a pair of sevens. Not, not the best thing on the table. A potential straight. There's a potential straight. John seems interested. He's playing. Uncle's playing as well. The, the pot is now up to 14 cents. That's as much money as on the pot right now in the table. That's what the pot is. So I can stay in for uh, four cents. I can raise it or I can fold. I'm going to stay in at four cents. So the pot goes up a little bit more. Higher and higher the pot goes. Okay. So, yeah, it looks like we're not going to get... The only thing we got is a pair of sevens. Uncle is out. It's going to cost me 12 cents to call the match against John. And uh, let's just do it. Let's see what happens. The only thing I'm riding in on is a pair of sevens. A pair of sixes. I beat him. I managed to beat John. I got 42 cents. So there you go. Sometimes it pays. Even if you think you have a bad hand, you may have the winning hand. And sometimes when you think you have the winning hand, you may have the losing hand because somebody else just happens to have a little bit better hand. Just like in John's case. He had a pair of sixes. I had a pair of sevens. That's just the way it goes. And... John could have easily had something else. He could have had a pair of queens because there was a queen on the table, and I think there was also a king, I believe. So it was it was, it was was dangerous for me to do that, but it, it does pay off. All right, so we got a ten of spades, seven of clubs. So all right, so I won. Okay. I won three cents. whoop do you do Sometimes that happens. Sometimes other players don't like what they have, and they'll automatically fold before the game really gets going. So that, that happens as well. So we're the small blind. We had to drop... Auto See, when you're the small blind, you automatically put down half the pot. The starting pot. So just bear that in mind. But it's once again, it's all automatic. I, w I would not do auto bet just in case. It's better just to manually bet. Because, I mean, I, I'd rather just manually make that decision. So right now, I have to put down another cent. I'll put down another cent. Another penny. John is checked, and the cards are being put out. So what do we got? All right, we got a, a seven of clubs, ten of hearts, nine of hearts. So we got a potential flush, maybe, maybe not. But we also have something else, a potential straight in the works. We got seven, nine, eight, six. So six, seven, eight, nine. If we get a five or a ten, Five or ten gives us a straight. So the next two cards have either got to be a five or a ten, and we'll have a straight. All right, so that was a three. That does not help us. Not really. So we'll check here. If you want, you could be psychological and throw money down just like John did. He may have something. He may have shit. But I'm going to risk it here. It may not be a good idea, but I have the chance to get a either a five or a ten. Either way, it would give me a straight. So I'm going to bet. I'm going to roll it and hope that maybe the next card works to my favor. So let's see what happens. Nope. Unfortunately not. I end up with a pair of sixes. That's all I got out of this. So just because you think you may end up getting something doesn't mean it's going to work out. Sometimes it does. A lot of times it doesn't. All right. So we're checking. This game will never get exciting at this rate. All right. Uncle has decided to put 27 cents down. He's trying to scare us out. I got currently 86 cents on me, so this would take a big hit on me, and I'm not willing to risk it because there's an ace in there, there's a seven, there's a nine. Easily you could have any of those. So I'm going to do the smart thing here, and I'm going to, well, cut my losses, as they say. Pot is currently up to over a dollar. Pair of aces, pair of nines. John has one, so I would have lost either way, and I would have lost a lot more money. So another smart move on my part. Now, sometimes you may think you make a smart move and then you look back in hindsight and you're like, well, I could have won that. I could have had the winning hand, but my advice is to always look forward, not backwards. But anyways, now that Arthur is the dealer, once again, you automatically deal. You don't, you don't do this yourself. It automatically does it whenever your character is the dealer. All right, so what do we got? We got a pair. We got uh, two diamonds. We got six of diamonds, jack of diamonds. Another potential uh, flush. We're teased with another flush opportunity. Probably won't happen, but we'll see. It's still early on. 
All right. So, right now, yeah. Don't only have a potential... If there's a... There's several options here. Okay, if the next two cards are diamonds, we have a flush. If the next two cards is a king and a ten, we have a straight. So, you could play it either way, but currently we have an ace high. And... Yeah, that's all we really have to go on right now. But we'll stay in. We'll stay in. It's interesting enough. Entices me a little bit to see what is going to happen in the next two hands. The next two cards. All right, we got a pair of jacks now. So that's better than what we did have. So that's not bad. pair of jacks is acceptable. But it also means that we don't have a chance for a flush or a straight. So we have to call it at 35 cents. Now, the mistake we could be making here is the fact that there are higher cards on the table than a jack. There's a queen, there's an ace, which means that Uncle and, and John could have a pair of queens or a pair of aces on their hands, whereas I only have a pair of jacks. So we just got to bear that in mind. 34 cents. All right. Let's see what happens. Pair of sevens. Pair of queens. Okay, Uncle just kicked my ass. Yep. I just got my ass stomped by Uncle. Royally stomped right there. So, while I beat John's pair of sevens, I was unable to beat Uncle's pair of queens. A little bit better than my pair of jacks. But there was always the possibility that Uncle could have been bluffing. We're down to nine cents. So, we're basically on a rope here. Probably about to get knocked out of this match. So, so we'll see. We'll see how it goes. All right. Three and a nine. It's not a very promising hand right now. But then again, then again, that could lead to something. Okay, two cents. Now, two cents right now means a lot more to me than it did earlier. I, I don't really feel confident with this hand. I'm going to fold it. I'm going to live to fight another hand, even though I'm down to, four, to seven cents. Some people are probably like, go, Burns. You should uh, just let him drag you out back and put you down. Put you out of your misery. But I've decided not to. In the hopes that maybe the next hand will go my favor. Because you never know. The next hand could go my favor. It wouldn't give me that much money because I only have seven cents to play with. But it may give me enough to keep me in the fight for a little bit longer. So right now we got eight of spades, two of clubs, seven of clubs, nine of diamonds. So maybe a pair. Maybe somebody has a pair right now. Possibly. Let's see what they got. Okay, let's see what the fifth card is going to be. Fifth card. Um, no possibility for a flush either way. All right, John is all in. Uncle. Pair of eights. Pair of queens. Pair of queens. Uncle has defeated John. John has busted. All right. Well, John, uh, you're going to have to go explain that to Abigail. While you lost all that money. Uh, John, I would not want to be you right now. No, I would not. <laughs> okay, so this could be the end of Arthur Morgan right here. This is how it ends for him. He could be destroyed by Uncle. Yeah, the legend of Uncle in poker. I'm starting to see what he's capable of. Okay, so this is interesting. A potential flush. A potential flush. Maybe, maybe not. I'd have to get three... Three spades to get me a flush here. And unfortunately, no. I have a pair of tens, so I can fight with a pair of tens. So let's, let's, you know what? Let's just go all in here. Let's just risk it. We have nothing left. We might as well. I rarely advise you to go all in unless you're in a situation like this where you're backed against the wall and you think you may have something. Queen high. All right, but the game's not over yet. He still has to throw out two cards. Pair of queens. Oh, crap. Yep. The cards went against me. Costed me the game. So, yeah. Got my ass handed to me, my uncle. It almost went my way, but there were still some more cards yet to put on the table. And I quickly went from winning or losing. But we can buy in. We can come back in. Let's buy in. We can play a little bit longer. Sure, we have another dollar to give to uncle. <laughs> All right, so that's a cool thing, though. So even if you do bust, as long as you have money, you can buy back in. It's not the end of the world, plus it's just another dollar. All right, so as you can tell, not a very good hand. 
We have a high A, so we'll we'll call it at one cent. But bear in mind, just because this is a crappy hand doesn't mean it'll end up being a crappy hand by the time it's over. But then again, it, it could be. It just depends on what these cards show us. And the cards are not really working in our favor here. But since it doesn't cost anything to check, we're going to stay in. Now, if you put down some money, I would probably do the smart thing and bow out. I don't think that we have what it takes to create a straight here. So we got 7, 8, 9, 10. No, there wouldn't be enough for, for straight. So yeah, we would be a card short from a straight, even if the next card is a 9. It wouldn't, wouldn't give us a straight, because you have to have 5 cards in order, to have, in order for it to be a straight. Okay, so what do we got here? We got a 7. We got a pair of 7s we're playing with. That's pretty much it. We might as well just check. Pair of 7s. All right, so we split the pot because we had the exact same thing, basically. There we go. So we each get, uh, what do we each get? Two cents. whoop de doo <laughs> Well, like I said, when you're playing at camp, you're, you're playing for small stakes. Smaller stakes than some of the other tables, like in Valentine or down in San Denis. I really wish there was a table that you could go to in this game that would be high-stakes poker by comparison, but there really isn't. And I sincerely hope that we're able to play this in Red Dead Online. It would be a, a, a big disappointment to me if we could not play poker in Red Dead Online. I would understand because of gambling laws, especially if there's going to be microtransactions in Red Dead Online. But hopefully Rockstar has figured out a way around it so that we can have our cake and eat it too. Currently we have a King of Diamonds and a Six of Spades, so potential here. A High King, that's not bad. High King is definitely a good thing. A promising start. What do we got? Ooh, that is very good. We have a pair of kings. A pair of kings. So you know what we're going to do? We're going to throw two cents on the table. See what, uh, see if Uncle bites. Well, Uncle's biting. All right. All right. He's calling it three. Okay. See, I could have kept one up again there. I could have raised him. He could have raised me. We could have, we could have had a little dance there. But maybe this time we'll go for a little dance. Because I still have the high king. And the cool thing is, the king is the highest card on the table. The problem is, if uncle happens to have an ace or a ten or both, then he would have a straight. And it's also possible that he may have two pairs on him. He may have a queen and a king in his hand, which would royally screw me. But we'll, you know, we're, we're going to try it out. Nothing, nothing ventured, nothing gained. All right, he's raising, so we're gonna, we know we're gonna one up him. We're gonna one up him. If he keeps one up in me, I'm gonna one up him. Just to show you guys what this is, this is about raising him. Somebody raises you, you think you got a good hand, and you got some money, you might as well. But you don't have to keep doing it. You can get to the point where you're like, okay, I don't want to raise anymore. I just want to call it. I just want to see what the final hand is. I think after this, I'll, I'll, I'll call him. But this is also a psychological thing to do to see if you can get people to bluff out. So I can either raise it and continue this or I can call it 11 cents or I can fold. I think it's too late in the game for me to fold. So I'm going to call just to see what the fifth card is going to be. Will the card, fifth card work in my favor or uncle's favor? All right. I got, I got two pair, pair of kings, pair of queens. Now uncle could have a full house on him. It's possible he already had a queen or already had a king. So it could be another uh, uh, pot splitting situation. All right, let's see what he's going to do. All right, so looks like we're going to be in another bidding war here. Careful, money bags. <laughs> All right, we're going to do this. We're just going to see what happens. Because I have a pretty good hand, but he could have just as good of a hand, if not a better hand. But it's always interesting how it could go. It could go either way for us. This could be our win, or this could be what busts us. Like I said, we have a good hand. But there's always a very real possibility that he has a better hand. Now, I could just go all in here. That's interesting. But at the same time, I'm just trying to entice him to give me as much of his money as possible. Yeah, I know. Pretty pathetic. Okay. Oh, what are you scared of, huh? All right, so this time, I think we're going to go all in once again just to show you guys. In order to go all in, just raise, raise it all the way up to the max, max amount of money you have left. It'll say all in, and then all in. all in. Let's just do this. Uh, we'll see. We'll see if I'm bluffing, Uncle. Here. Pair of kings, pair of queens. What does he got? What we got here. All right. We split the pot. Damn it. 
The pot has been split again. So we each get a dollar. So all that for nothing, basically. All that for... Well, I mean, we didn't lose. So that's a good thing. We did not lose. He did not have a better hand than us. But he had the same hand that we had, so... The pot is split 50-50. So that, that, that's how it happens. I was hoping I would win, but I did not. It's just the way it goes. And I was almost breaking even there. And breaking even would be ending up with the same amount of money that you, you put in to be part of a game. Like, in this case, it was a dollar buy-in. Some places it may be like $2 or $3 or more. But the idea is to have fun and to at least try and, and break even or clean the table and take everybody out, you know, one at a time and end up with everybody's monies. This is promising. A potential straight flush. Most likely not, but you never know. We have a 10 of clubs and a queen of clubs. Now, like, like I mentioned earlier, the royal flush is a very, very extremely difficult hand to get, and we're not going to get it this time, <laughs> as you can tell. We have a pair of jacks to go of our queen. We could still technically get a flush if the next two cards are clubs, but most likely not. But we'll, we'll stay in anyways. We have a high queen to go of the two jacks. So now it gets very interesting. It's very interesting now because we are one card away from at least getting a flush. If the next card is a club, we have a flush. So that's, that's better than a pair of jacks. Let's see what he does. Now, I don't think I'm going to raise him. I'm just going to call it a two cents because I want to see what that fifth card is. Will the fifth card be a club? Nope, it's not. We're screwed. So, like I said, sometimes it happens. Sometimes it doesn't happen. The best we can hope for right now is that I have a higher card than he has. Unless he happens to have a three of a kind. He could have a jack in his pocket. I guess we're about to find out. He had two pair. Jackson sevens. Uncle wins again. So obviously, two pair beats a pair. Look at that. And hopefully you guys are starting to get an idea of how poker works, those of you new to poker. And like I said, anyone else that's experienced with poker, you're more than welcome to help out in the uh, comment section with any uh, tips or tricks to help out any aspiring new poker players in Red Dead Redemption 2. And this doesn't just apply to Red Dead Redemption 2. It can apply to any poker game. Like uh, Providence Poker, which is free to download and play on PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and I think also through Steam. Okay. Yes. Alright, so we got three cents there. Hooray. whoop de doo But yeah, I mean, it, it helps you for all sorts of, like, poker games. Like, video games that play Texas Hold'em, and of course, Texas Hold'em in real life. This could definitely help you in real life, because this is the same rules that apply for Texas Hold'em. In the real world. Some of you are probably like, Go Burns, what's the real world? It sounds like a scary place. Oh, it is. It's very scary. Okay, we got a... The, the game already told us we have an ace high, so it kind of it kind of peaked and cheated. Ace of diamonds, three clubs. We got, we got a pretty decent high card, so that's good. The best high card you can get is an ace. So this may be worth staying in. We'll see. Depends on what the cards show us. Will the cards work in our favor? As of right now, it's a possibility. A possible straight. We could get, if we get a jack and a 10, we would have a straight. A very good straight. The best kind of straight you could get. Well, I mean, not. it's not better than a straight flush, but for a regular straight, it'd be very good. Because the high card would be the... I know that, Uncle. I'm trying to explain how to play poker. Jeez, don't be so rude. Okay, so we don't have a chance for a straight, unfortunately. We still have a high ace, so that's okay. So it looks like Uncle doesn't have anything interesting either. And once again, yeah, all we have is a high ace. Here, it's not going to cost us anything to check, so we might as well. There's a chance we may win, but we didn't. A pair will always beat a high card, so pair of queens beat an ace. If I had a pair of aces, obviously I would have been able to beat the pair of queens. But alas, it was not meant to be. All right, so once again, Uncle has prevailed. I seriously doubt that we're going to be able to beat Uncle, but it's still fun. We'll go on for a few more minutes. Hopefully, I'm just doing this because I want to give you guys, I guess, a better idea of how to play poker through my own mistakes. It's the best way to learn is by watching somebody else play. 
Okay, so. Okay, I, th I thought I might have had something special here. I do have another high ace card. But as you can tell, they're different suits. The ace is a club, and the eight is a, is a spade. So just bear that in mind. Sometimes it can trick you. Sometimes you think it want a spade is a club or a club is a spade. But you just got to be mindful of the cards. So right now, we really don't have anything to go by except for a high ace. But we'll check. We'll stay in. It doesn't cost anything to, to stay in. All right, let's see what the fourth card is. The fourth card is another spade. We Even if the, the fifth card turns out to be another spade, we don't have enough spades on the table or in our hand for a flush, unfortunately. But, once again, checking does not cost anything. But Uncle, either he has something or he's bluffing. It's very possible he may have something. So, we're going to look. We're going to experiment. We're going to see what he may have or may not have. But, apparently, Uncle's a pretty good player. All right. So, even though there are three spades on the table and I have a four spade, you need five spades for a flush. So, we are... A spade short, unfortunately. But we'll check. How about we do this? All right, what's he putting down? 13 cents. Mm, it's currently 25 cents. The pot. I have 87 cents on me. I feel like I've already put some money in the table. On the pot. He could be bluffing. Let's see if he's bluffing it. This could be dangerous. We'll call him. We'll call him. We'll see what he has. Pair of kings. Okay, he beat me. Yep, he won. Sometimes they bluff, sometimes they actually got something. It really depends on who you're playing. And that's another thing. Be mindful of everybody you're playing against. Study them. You know, look at them and get an idea of what kind of person you're dealing with. Because sometimes people are dumb. They just throw money on the table just for the sake of throwing money on the table. And they end up having crap. Or they're trying to bluff you. They're trying to psychological warfare on you. And a lot of times they may have nothing. Sometimes they may actually have a card. But then again, there's always these small, quiet types that put a little bit of money here, a little bit of money there, until they start actually really putting money on the table. That's a tell, too. Could indicate that they may actually have something. We have potentially something here, a three of diamonds and a king of diamonds. So a potential flush, maybe. Maybe not. Will the odds be in our favor this time? Will Lady Luck go our way? Apparently, uh, Uncle thinks he has something. So we'll call it two cents. He raised it. I got to see what the cards are. Are they diamonds? I need diamonds. Diamonds are my friends. And, of course, one diamond. But, interesting, I do have a pair of kings right now. A pair of kings and a potential flush that I could play either way. If the next two cards are diamonds, that means I'll have five diamonds, which is a flush. So... Not a bad thing. Not bad. I could have put some money down. Surprisingly, he did not. Now, what I have at the moment is a two pair. I have a pair of kings and a pair of twos. Unfortunately, it means that I cannot get a flush now. Even if the final card is a diamond, I won't get a flush. But I do have two pair to play with, so we'll bet two cents. Let's see what Uncle does. He falls. He did not have a very good hand. He thought he had a good hand at first, but once the, the first cards were put on the table, he realized he didn't really have anything to play with. He thought he had something, and you'll that'll happen to you too, and it happens to me all the time. The cards you get, you think you can do something with it, but when we see the cards drop on the table, a lot of times it's not meant to be. And, and sometimes, like I mentioned earlier, the opposite can happen. Are you lucky or not? You ever considered that? Freaking dialogue back and forth between these two is hilarious. Now, sometimes you may think you have a shit hand, but the cards that drop on the table could actually work to your favor. So currently, I'm the big blind. It costs me nothing to stay in, so I'm going to check. Just so we see what, what we got on the table. Will it work with this? Maybe, maybe not. All right, what do we got? Well, we have a potential flush in the works. Two of clubs, five of clubs, along with three of clubs are a potential straight are a straight flush it, it's amazing to think about the possibilities the probabilities kind of sort of predicting what we may end up having or may not have a lot of times it doesn't work out but that's kind of the fun of poker 
Kind of the fun part. Now, Uncle thinks he has something because he threw us three cents down. So we'll call. We'll, we'll stay in. I'm interested enough to stay in because we have a potential for several scenarios. All right. So in this case, no. Yeah, because we have a two, three. So we needed a four or a six for a straight. Yeah, seven's a little too far for what we were trying to do here. But then again, uh, yeah. My beard's getting longer. Come on. Yeah, at the moment, all we have is a, is a high king. So that's all we have. We had, we had a chance for a straight, but that seven has dashed our chances. It had to be a four or a six. Unfortunately, it was not. That's just the way it goes. But once again, costs nothing to check. We'll see what Uncle does. He's checking as well, which means he may not have had a good of hand as he was hoping for. And currently, we have all we have is a high king. Well, there's a high ace on the table, but that's it. There's nothing I have that I can work with. I have a total of three clubs. That's nothing. I have no pairs. The best thing I have is is the high ace. That's it. Apparently, Uncle had nothing either. Yeah. All right. I win 10 cents because in my hand, I had a king, and my king is higher than his jack. The highest card he had in his hand, in his pocket, was the jack. So, obviously, kings beat jacks. So, yay. I won 10 cents. That's just, you know, it's a, it's a victory against Uncle. I'll take the win. I'll take it. Hey, I got some good quality venison meat, okay? And I brought it straight back to the camp. So, so don't take it out on me. Take it out on the cook. Anyways. <laughs> All right, so right now, we got a nine of spades, jack of diamonds, which is um, potentially something. Different families, obviously, but it's always a possibility that, that one or both these cards, I would say one of the cards could end up leading us to something magical. Maybe both the cards. Uh, in the situation, no, not really. <laughs> nope, got got nothing here. The queen is the high card, so yeah. it costs nothing to check. Always bear that in mind. Check. If you feel squeamish about your hand and somebody starts putting money down, you can always fold. There's no shame in folding and living to fight another day. So what do we got here is actually something of interest. A potential straight. Nine, ten, jack, queen. If I get an eight or a king here, that is a straight. So I have a potential straight in the works. What seemed like nothing could actually end up being something. Unfortunately, it was not meant to be. <laughs> there, were, there was a hope and a dream here. But I do have a pair of sixes. So pair of sixes with a, with a jack. That's my high card. So if, if, I have, if I have the highest card between him and me, then I'll win a total of four cents. But then again, maybe he has something better. He had two pairs, so he wins. Tens and sixes beat the pair of sixes, so... I'm surprised that Uncle didn't put more money on the table, though. Because he knew he had a pair, a two pair. But, you know, he probably thought that maybe he had something more. And sometimes that happens. Sometimes you, you just don't know if you have the winning hand or not. You, you'd like to believe you have the winning hand, but you're not willing to throw any chips on the table in the pot in order to back it up. And sometimes you, you may just feel like you have no choice. Now, in this situation, we have two clubs again. So we're being enticed with a potential straight or maybe even a, a straight flush. We won't get a royal flush, but we could get a straight flush. That's the best hand we could hope for right now. It all depends on these cards. Are they going to be clubs or not? Let's look. Unfortunately, they were not. However, however, I do have a pair of queens. That's good. And it's even better that the queen happened to high card on the table. Let's go ahead and bet two cents. Let's see what Uncle does. All right, so Uncle's interested enough to stay in. Well, let's play a little bit more. Let's tease him and let's entice him. You ain't got more than that. Okay, let's go. Okay. Sometimes this happens, though. Sometimes it just... You just get in the mood to do this, and it happens to me all the time. I will call him right here, because we still, we still have two cards to see, which could go... It could go my way, or it could go his way. Just like it kind of did earlier. All right, so right now, that didn't really help me at all. 
But I still have a pair of queens. So we'll, we'll bet another two cents. Let's see what he does. All right, we're playing it safe, but I'm I'm still gonna raise it a little bit because I'm trying to I'm trying to bleed him a little. I don't want to go too crazy here, because even if I lose, I'd like to live to fight for another hand. All right, so he called. All right, so what do we got? We got two pair, pair of queens, pair of fours. Let's bet. Is he gonna call me or is he gonna raise me? Ball's in his court. All right, he called. Pair of queens, pair of fours versus two pair. All right. All right, okay. pair of queens and pair of fours beats the pair of sixes and pair of fours because of the queens. The queens is what gave me the victory. So thank you, ladies. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right, so we're over a dollar. Now would be a good time to quit because at the very least I could say that I survived this long against Uncle and at least I broke even, even though technically I did go bust against him, just like Lenny and, and John before me. But we'll stay in for a few minutes longer. We have a king high, or a high king as I prefer to call it, you know, like Skyrim. I couldn't help it. One cent, because I'm the small blind. One cent to stay in, I'll stay in. All right. Now he's raising because he thinks he may have a good hand, or else he's just trying to bluff me out. But I'm willing to stay in. I'm willing to stay in and, and see what this is all about. I may end up regretting it, but we'll see. Okay, so what do we have? Do we have anything to work with here? Um, maybe. It's possible we could have a straight on our hands. Maybe, maybe not. Let's see, we got nine, ten, we would need a ten and a queen here. A ten and queen to get a king high straight. But we'll stay in, we'll stay in. We'll see what happens. Maybe, or maybe not. How will it go? Um, yeah, that was too high of a card. Shit. All right, he called six. Once again, all I have is this. And there's no potential for, for, for straight. Even if a queen dropped, it still wouldn't help me. I can't get a flush. I can't get a straight. My, my only hope is maybe a pair if, if a six or a king drops. Well, that's pretty much it. But just, just for an experimentation, just for science, we'll stay in. Just for science. That way, if, if this turns out to be a mistake, hopefully it'll help you guys learn from my mistakes that I'm intentionally making. So right now, pair of bullets on the table, pair of aces. So you know what? I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to up him to 34 cents. This may be it. All right. He's called. So let's see what we got. Pair of aces. Two pair. Two pair obviously beats a pair of aces. Uncle has won again. So we are currently bleeding really bad. Down on our luck. Almost over and done with here. We're down to 57 cents. We could be on our way out here. So Uncle's obviously winning. Winning is an understatement right there. He is, he is kicking ass and taking names for a guy that likes to sleep all day with the lumbago. <laughs> Me too, Arthur. Me too. All right, potential flush once again enticing us. A spade flush in the works, maybe. Maybe not. Let's just see what we got. Okay, what is here? Nope, definitely not. We do have a pair of jacks, though. Pair of jacks, that's not bad. All right, we'll stay in for the pair of jacks. That's the high card on the table. All right, uncle's in. He's called, and he's going to throw down a fourth card. All right, so Ace of Diamonds. Okay, so that's we still have the same thing. So we'll put down some more money. Now, bear in mind, there are situations where you don't have to bet. You could simply check if you want to save your money. But, you know, nothing ventured, nothing gained. You know, if you want the reward, if you think you have a good hand, you've got to be willing to put some money down. In. And you start small and you work your way up. You don't go all in because a lot of times people are just going to do the smart thing and fold even if, they think you're bluffing. They're just going to try and save their money. So on, only on rare occasions would I recommend you going all in. So we still got we still got a pair of jacks to play with. That's that's it. That's all I got. Just a little wager. So I'll wager him a little, just a little, just in case. All right, he's seeing me. All right, pair of jacks versus 
Ace, Ace High, he didn't have anything. So Uncle was bluffing there. So even Uncle can bluff. Even Uncle doesn't always have a good hand. So just remember that. Even the best poker players will bluff occasionally just for fun. Just, just to get that psychological warfare on you. Because a lot of it is... A lot of it is psychological, but a lot of it is actually the real deal. A lot of times, they actually have good cards, and that's why it's important to, I guess, kind of understand who you're playing against, and you get a better idea the longer you play against somebody, whether it's AI or, or real people. So right now, we got a 10 of diamonds and a 2 of hearts. Not really much there. I'm the small blind, so in order to stay in, I got to throw in an extra cent. All right. Uncle's checking. So let's check out these cards, shall we? Here we go. Yeah, nothing really special. There's really nothing special here, but like I always say, costs nothing to check. Uh, no. Yep. Just so we can see the next card. All right. So once again, nothing. Whole lot of nothing. Not even a flush. We can't. Even if the next card's a flush, we'll be, we'll be short. Yep. We won't be able to get a flush or a straight or. Really anything here. But, you know, costs nothing to check, so we'll, we'll check to the end. Uncle's checking as well, so he doesn't really have anything either. All right, so what we have here... What we have here is obviously nothing. If one of the other cards would have been a queen, we would have a very good straight right now. Say, for example, the six of the four was a queen, we would have a straight. A damn good hand. So, we don't have anything. We're checking. Ace high. Versus ace high. But we had the high card. We had a 10 versus his 8. So we win 4 cents. Hooray! 4 cents. I'm rich. I'm wealthy. Okay. So we'll, I keep saying we'll play one more hand. But this is just the way poker is. Plus, since I'm not doing a live stream today. A poker live stream like I've done the past two weeks. This is, I guess, a pre-recorded stream of sorts, if you will. Uh, built on top of a... Uh, tutorial basics uh, poker video that I made for some of you. All of you that are playing Red Dead Redemption 2 wanting to learn more about poker. Hopefully this proves to be helpful. Queen of Diamonds, Seven of Spades. All right. Cost me nothing to check. Let's see what the cards hold for us. Will they be good or bad? Um, okay, pair of sevens. Pair of sevens. Okay. We'll, we'll roll in on the pair of sevens. All right, Uncle is intrigued. All right, we'll call it eight. Now, unfortunately, the seven is not the highest card at the moment. So we got four, three. Once again, I'm rolling on the pair of sevens, but Uncle could have a pair of tens, which means he would have a better hand, which means he'll be taking more of my money. No, he's raising. Okay, so let's raise him too. Just for science, as I mentioned a moment ago. Most of the time, I would advise against this, but I'm just doing it just for the sake of doing it. If I had a 10, I'd feel a lot more confident right now. All right, so what we got is a potential... It's possible he could have a straight. He could have a 5 and a 6. Therefore, he would have 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and that would be a straight. That would be a very good hand, even though it's the lowest straight you can get. But I'm still rolling with my pair of sevens. <laughs> my only hope is he also has a pair of sevens. And I just happen to have a higher... Uh, my queen happens to be higher than whatever the fuck he has. But most likely he probably has a better hand than me. But we're, we're going we're gonna to do this till the end. Till the end. To at least teach you the folly, the dangers of trying to one-up somebody when you may not have a very good hand. So... Yeah, learn from the mistakes that I'm intentionally making here. But then again, I may have the better hand, so that's always the risk. But we're going to keep going. You know what? Once again, we're going to, for one last time, we're going to go all in. All in. All right, let's see what happens. Pair of sevens. Pair of tens. Uncle has one. So, like I said, like I said, that was in the end a bad move. And I knew it was a bad move. Because of the fact I had a, a weaker pair. It's just the way it goes. Thanks for the game, Uncle. Appreciate it. Okay, okay, I'm, I'm just going to go over here. Thanks for, the, 
Thanks for the games, Uncle and John and, and Lenny. I'm just going to go hang out over here in the pier and, and wrap up my, my stream. Well, actually, we didn't stream. My faux stream. Yeah, we'll just call it a faux stream. We wrap up this, uh, this video. So basically, that was it. That was uh, Poker for Beginners. We went over the basics, and I kind, of, I kind of held our hand a little bit whenever I was showing off you know, one card at a, at a time. I was doing that intentionally. Now, some people do play Texas Hold'em that way, but a lot of people play it the way we were playing it a moment ago by showing off all three cards at once. They show off the, the three cards, and you go with the fourth card, then the fifth card, like we demoed over the past uh, over 50 minutes. I think it was roughly 50 minutes and change in, com in combination with what we just did a moment ago. Well, nearly an hour ago with the uh, tutorial basics video. So anyways, I hope that this video proved informative and at the very least entertaining for those of you that took the time to watch my Red Dead Redemption 2 Poker for Beginners vid. And like I said, if you have any questions regarding poker, you can uh, let us know about that and I will do my best to answer your question and any other poker experts that are part of the Go Burns Nation or anyone out there that came across this video also knowledgeable about poker, hopefully they can provide some additional tips and tricks. So feel free and leave any questions or tips and tricks regarding poker and Red Dead Redemption 2 below in the comments section.